once again, I'm Extra Life, and I'm going to be doing a little bit of traveling this summer, and I want to keep working on my sequencer project, which is a CV sequencer. It goes with my Eurorack synthesizer, but I don't want to bring my whole Eurorack synth with me. It's a little bit bulky, and I have enough trouble getting through TSA as it is without a big box of wires following me around. So I was thinking about getting another CV synthesizer to use for traveling, but I really don't want to spend the money, and I already have one of these little Korg Monotron delays. Unfortunately, this doesn't have CV input. Or does it? This is the Korg Monotron Delay. Much like other Monotron models, it's got an oscillator and a filter, and an LFO, but this has a PT2399 delay built in, which is very noisy and gritty and, and wonderful for those kind of space laser sounds. Uh, but since this doesn't have a quantizer on the input, it might be useful for us as a CV controllable device. Unfortunately, it doesn't have anything but an auxiliary input and a headphone output. So, how do we get CV signals into this guy? Well, let's take it apart and find out. So here is our disassembled Monotron circuit board. You can see we've got a speaker on the back case, some of these output jacks, the volume control potentiometer, a trim pot, which adjusts the range of the keyboard, and some potentiometers and the battery connectors. And over here is the ribbon connector for the touch-sensitive keyboard control. However, on the back of this circuit board, if we look very closely, there are lots of these little gold dots which are actually patch points that let us connect to various points in the circuit and control or get different parameters output. You can see there's inputs for pitch and gate, there's outputs or connections for the voltage supply, VCC and the ground, as well as outputs for the LFO and the VCO, and an input for the cutoff frequency. So all we need to do is solder some wires to these patch points and then we can create a connector that lets us hook up our sequencer to the monotron. By the way, this really fine pitch wire, I don't even know what gauge it is. I think it's solid core, but it's called Kynar wire and it's got some kind of heat proof coating and it's designed for soldering directly to pads on PCBs and it's also called mod wire for that reason. This board says lead free on it, so I'm gonna use some lead free solder. I'm going to use this little 4-pin header socket connector to go out from the back so that we don't have any wires hanging out of the synth. So I need to find a way to solder these wires onto these teeny tiny little pins. Now we've really got to start doing some damage and put a hole in this case so that we can fit this connector through. Okay, here is our test setup for our Monotron conversion kit. We've got our sequencer outputting some CV and gate. That's heading over to the breadboard and being processed by this little circuit here and coming into the Monotron. You can ignore the Arduino and this stuff over here. This is for another project uh, to do with the sequencer actually and the display on it. But right now we're just using these little components over here. And if we press play, You can hear we're getting a lovely kind of monotron sound acid line out of this combination. And the pitch scaling sounds pretty good. I mean, I've dialed it as close as I can by ear. 
but we can also use the monotron controls directly to affect it. And the nice thing about this setup is we're actually only using one signal and the ground connection, so we don't have to send separate pitch and gate. And it's a little bit odd, we're actually connecting the pitch output into the gate input. If you send two separate signals, they kind of intermix in a weird way that makes them difficult to work with. For example, if the gate's on, it'll affect the scaling of the pitch input. And that sort of makes sense because if we unplug our pitch, gate and pitch on the monotron are actually both controlled by this one slider, which produces a voltage that's low and high. Uh, much like the pitch you hear, and if it's below a certain threshold, if it's, you're not pressing it at all, then it turns the gate off altogether. So instead of using a gate signal to the gate input and a pitch signal to the pitch input, what we do is we send the pitch input through this voltage divider, and then we use the gate input to control this transistor. And what the transistor does is, if the gate is on, it lets the pitch signal through, and if the gate is off or low or connected to ground, then it clamps this output uh, all the way to ground and reduces the voltage of the pitch below the threshold where the monotron sees it as playing a note. So you really only need to send the one signal over as long as you've got the components to produce the right combination pitch and gate signal. One nice thing about this is that you can simultaneously use the slider input. This potentiometer is doing the hard work of translating these 10 volt signals well this sequencer only goes up to about 8 or 9 volts, but it scales that down into the 1 to 5 volt range that the monotron accepts. So if we adjust this potentiometer while we're playing, we can hear that the pitch changes, and if we get too low, some of the notes are actually too low to turn the monotron on. So we need to make sure that we're outputting a sufficient voltage from the sequencer, and that we're dividing it by the right ratio to get something that's inside the monotron range. Having the potentiometer lets us just dial it in by ear instead of having to do math, which I am much more inclined to do it that way. So my plan is to do a little bit of recycling. This is an old project I did where I was trying to make a microphone preamp, and it never really worked as planned. So what I want to do is take all these components and stuff them onto a circuit board and put them in this box and control the knob here, with this potentiometer that sticks out, and we'll make a little go-between box for the CV to connect to the monotron.
there you have it, a successful adaptation of Eurorack CV signals to monotron compatible voltages. With this I'll be able to take my sequencer with me and program it on the go without having to haul a whole bunch of Eurorack gear alongside in my carry-on. But I do think I need a portable power supply to power this thing because, well, the one in there is just too big to bring and the USB one I have only has a 12 volt rail and this works a whole lot better if it has dual rails so it can use op amps in their proper configuration. I'm going to post the schematics and the PCB layout up on my GitHub page if you want to build one yourself. It's very simple. If you have a Monotron and a Eurorack system, might as well give it a shot. Before I go, I also wanted to say a big thanks to everyone who has joined me over on Patreon. It really means a lot to have your support. And if you're interested in helping me make more of these videos more frequently, getting a little bit of bonus content and early access to new videos, you can click the link down in the description or go to patreon.com slash extra life and become a supporter today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and found it informative, and I will see you next time.